here at Air Venture and we're in the Fun Fly Zone, formerly known as the Ultralight Area. It's still the same charming place it always was, but now they got a cool new name, the Fun Fly Zone, so we like that. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking today with the man behind the Aerolight, light, Dennis Carley. So, Dennis, uh, let's let's do a little review for people. All right. You've got one of the most economical airplanes probably on all of Air Venture, and that's saying something because yep. there's many thousands Lots of out good ones, here. Yep. And, uh, and, and a very affordable airplane, below $20,000. The details you can go get from Dennis if we give you the web address at the end. But uh, very cool, lots of airplane. You know how much I like this little yeah. guy. So I'm happy to see you continuing to be successful with it and selling them. Recently, you've been able to uh, get into the European market and you yeah. told me about something new. But first of all, how many of these things are flying after all the years it's been around? Uh, you know, it was designed in 97 and started production and delivery in 98. And in that period of time, it's somewhere in, in excess of 400 planes. Wow, that's pretty good. That's uh, 16 years and 400 airplanes, and you know, with a build-up, and you've been having, you've been having some strong business oh, lately. Yeah. You told me earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. You're staying, you're staying busy building these guys. I huh? keep using the phrase "can't build them fast enough," and that's that's very accurate. Well, it's very cool. I stopped out and visited your facility, very near my home, and uh, well, the tidy airplane. Uh, I see where it now comes yeah, from yeah. and how it gets that way. So recently, though, you got overseas with the airplane, which most people think, well, it's a part 103, so that's you. US, but it's not just US, right. is it? Tell yeah. us a little more about that. Well, they've got a you know they've got a category now in Europe uh, that is similar to our Part 103, but the aircraft itself has to be load tested and flight tested, and basically issued a, a certificate, an, air, a, an air witness certificate. Um, they're about 90 percent through that process okay. over there. We sent them four planes early this year, one of which was used for uh, destructive load testing, and uh, they're doing the flight testing now. They've made a couple changes to meet their their little quirks in their certification over there, but they're just about done with it, and I think they're going to be uh, very pleased with the sales based on what we saw over there at the uh, Aero. Yeah, I, I was there, and uh, I didn't even notice the airplane a couple of times, and yeah. it was this color, and yeah. you can't not notice this. Uh, but I literally couldn't see it because there were so many people around yeah. it. I went later in the week to be able to talk to uh, uh, your uh, to dealership Wolfgang, over yep. there, to Wolfgang and his whole family, yep. all wearing clothing that matched the airplane. <laughs> yep. It was really fun to see. Anyway, they were getting a lot of interest in this 120 kilo, uh, 120 kilogram class, yep. which for the math numbers, that's uh, 264 pounds compared to our 254. So you make that easily. Yeah. And the interest was there. So that's cool. We'll wish uh, Wolfgang and the family a good luck getting through the rest of that German service. You mentioned another country, though. Yeah, we're we're close to uh, having a, an importer into uh, Russia as well. We should have that finalized sometime sometime late this month or early next month. And they've got some category that'll accommodate this. Yeah, they uh, they have uh, you know they've got this type of aviation over there. The, the, the company and the person we've been dealing with over there is well versed in the in the industry and importing aircraft from the United States, so it should Excellent. be smoothly as well. Good. Well, best of luck with that. Thanks. Well, let's come back to some new development that you've been doing, Dennis. Yeah. We are familiar with the Hearth engine that you've been using for a while. Yep. We know you're still working on a four-stroke package that uh, uh, is taking a little extra work, I understand. Yep. But here we've got a familiar engine, but not one we've seen so much recently. Yeah. What are we looking at, and what's it all about? Uh, Kawasaki 340, uh, which you know, in the early days, you saw this engine on a lot of these designs. Very common. Very yes. common. And then uh, Kawasaki uh, apparently didn't want to pursue specifically for the aviation market sure there were a lot of these that were uh, purchased prior to that we we purchased about 30 brand new engines from a company that was building trikes in the western part of the country about a year ago we bought the remaining 30 engines they had and we've used about 10 of those so far it is as you know, Dan, if you ever flown it, it's the smoothest, quietest two-stroke engine I've ever used on anything. It's really a good match for this clean light design. I have a bunch of hours in the 440, which is just almost identical, just slightly larger cylinders. Yeah. And uh, but the 340 is, I'm assuming, the same technology. Same, same. And yeah, it was a great little engine. It yeah. was like too bad we couldn't keep those, but but you got a good supply of them for now, anyway. Yeah, for now, yeah. and that's what you've done here is uh, made a Kawasaki mount. And yeah. Any challenges with that? No, we did a couple. We had a couple incarnations of the reduction drive till we got it exactly where we wanted, and we put a small scoop on that rear cylinder to keep it just a little bit cooler than it was oh, without it. 
Oh, yeah, they are in line, so the back yeah. one's going to get a little hotter. So yeah. you, that, that did the job for you? Yep, and, but it's, uh, you know, if you've seen it fly out here and you've listened to it fly by compared to everything else. Sounds it's, different. Yeah, it's the yeah. quietest thing out here, yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, a lot of pilots aren't too concerned about noise because they're wearing noise reduction headsets and things like that. But there's people down there that make noises back at you <laughs> if you disturb their picnic or yeah. whatever. So that's good to make less noise. Yeah. And uh, what has been the response to this? Uh, good. Uh, we Do people know the engine? Are they familiar? Do they remember it? Well, most people, you know, you say what engine's on a light plane and Rotex is the only name that pops into their head. But Hearth has uh, captured a pretty good market share in the past few years. And most people recognize that name. Um, I'd say probably 10 to 20 percent of the people here, when you say it's a Kawasaki, they recognize it. The rest of them, it takes, you know, a couple minutes of explaining what the positives are for that engine uh, compared to some others. And every single person that we've, uh, you know, delivered this engine to on the plane is very happy with it. Is that right? Yeah. Well, let's do a little comparison for people, and we're not we're not saying anything negative about the Hearth. We just want to balance them because mm -hmm. more people know the Hearth these days yep. than the Kawasaki as far as power and, and what it does for the airplane. Mm -hmm. So make a little comparison for us. Uh, and, and first of all, which engine Hearth, which Hearth is, engine is it that you normally have been using? The F-33, the, F the single cylinder. Yeah. Okay. And, and that puts out how much power? It puts out, well, they rate it, you know, they rate that at 28 horsepower. Kawasaki says this is 32 horsepower. That really doesn't mean anything to us. We want to know what, what's the static thrust when we okay. get the reduction drive and, and prop on. We get 200 pounds of static thrust out of this, as you see it sitting okay. here. We get 210 out of the single cylinder F-33. So on the plane with the F-33, we get 50 to 75 feet per minute higher climb rate. The level flight speeds are the same. The trade-off is this is a little smoother and a little quieter. Two cylinder, this, yeah. yeah it's going to be a little smoother, is. right? Yep, yep. that's really the differences. Okay. Yeah. So for all intents and purposes, that's almost no difference. Right, almost, yeah. And uh, does this cost any more than the Hearth? Our our cost on these engines, since we bought so many of them at once, is you actually... You got a good deal on them. Yeah, it's a few hundred dollars less. It's about $800 yeah. less. Less? Okay. Apples to apples. Okay. Comparison. All right, so the airplane probably in a similar selling price yeah. then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they can just choose which of the two yep. engines they want. Well, that's some great stuff. Any, anything else new going on for you beside all that international and a new engine? And, no, that's all we can and, keep and, up with right now. It's <laughs> nothing else new. You know, we've got some other projects in the pipeline for a year, two years down the road, but what we're, cons what we're working on now is finishing up that four-stroke, and we've changed the mount from what we had down at, uh, at Sun and Fun. We were trying to get it uh, done in flight test and brought up here, but they always seem to have Oshkosh six weeks too soon, you know, so we, did, we didn't get it done, so we'll have it We'll have it flying in a couple months and, and have that one, uh, that one down at Sun and Fun again next year as well. Okay, great. Well, we'll be looking for you there, Dennis. That's uh, a lot of good information. Uh, we never try and answer answer all questions because A, we can't do it, B, we want to have a reason to send them to your website. Yeah. So we'll put it on the screen for people. Just tell yeah. us what the website is. It's uh, fly103.com. Pretty easy, so you can't hardly miss that. In honor of the Part 103 rule that we've had now for 32 years, I believe, still a great rule, still applies, still no pilot's license, still no aircraft registration, still no medical required, and Dennis can build them ready to fly for you, and you do it all day long. Yep, we sure do. Excellent stuff. Uh, Dan Johnson speaking with Dennis Carley here today. You can find more about the Aerolite and lots of other, other kinds of aircraft of all descriptions on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Dennis and I here at AirVenture.